Picture this for a second. You're holding a tool, right? Something someone made, not last week, not even a hundred years ago, but maybe, maybe even before our own species really showed up in Europe. What does that make you think? It really shifts your perspective, doesn't it? I mean, that's exactly what we're getting into today. This uh, incredible find an 80,000 year old spear point made of bone from Mezmyskaya Cave in Russia. Yeah, and it's not just some random old thing they dug up. We're looking at reports um, from the Journal of Archaeological Science, Science News, too. They're saying this one artifact is making people seriously rethink what Neanderthals could do. Exactly. It points towards, well, technological innovation happening independently, way earlier than we might have thought. Okay, so that's our mission for this deep dive, right? right? To unpack what this discovery really means for you, for how we see Neanderthals, their tech, their smarts. And how it fits into the whole, you know, grand story of human evolution. A fascinating piece of the puzzle. Absolutely. So let's start right there at the cave, Mesmaskaya Cave. Where exactly is that and what was the scene like? Right. It's in the northern Caucasus Mountains in Russia. And the spear tip itself, it was actually first spotted back in 2003. Oh, so a while ago. Yeah. But the detailed analysis is more recent. Imagine the archaeologists, they're excavating this uh, prehistoric campsite. There's a fire pit, animal bones, basically evidence of everyday life. Okay. And then, bam, this nine centimeter spear tip made from bison bone, just lying there amongst the remains. So found right where they lived and worked. Pretty much. And the dating, this is the really crucial part. It's between 80,000 and 70,000 years old. Wow. And Homo sapiens, our ancestors, weren't really around there then. Not in any significant way, no. We think they arrived much later, maybe around 45,000 years ago. So this predates that by tens of thousands of years. Okay. And it's his recent work, led by Lyubov Golovanova and her team, published in the journal, that's really brought out the full significance of this specific artifact. So what did they find when they looked closer? How was this thing actually made? It wasn't just, like, a sharpened stick of bone, presumably. Uh. Oh, definitely not. The analysis shows it was carefully shaped. You can see marks from stone tools. It was carved. Okay. But here's a really telling detail. <laughs> they found bitumen residue. Bitumen, like um, natural tar. Exactly. Like gudron, yeah. And that strongly suggests it was hafted. Hafted, meaning stuck onto a wooden shaft to make a proper spear. Precisely. And that's not simple. It means understanding adhesives, how to prepare them, how to attach the points securely. That implies a whole different level of thinking. It does. The researchers call it a nascent level of bone tool technology. Maybe not as refined as later Homo sapiens stuff, perhaps, but still complex. Think about getting that bitumen ready that probably involved heating, maybe some purification. So they knew their materials. It seems so. And right. the design itself looks intentional, deliberately shaped, sharpened, maybe even thinking about how it would fly through the air aerodynamics almost. Wow. Okay, so it's engineered yeah. in a way. What about how it was used? Did they find any clues on the spear point itself, like damage? They did, yes. There's a small crack right at the tip and tiny fractures radiating out from it. Uh. They used micro CT scans, really high tech stuff to look closely. And that damage, it's consistent with hitting something hard head on, like in a hunt. It makes sense. You'd throw or thrust a spear, it hits bone or something. Exactly. But here's the kicker. They also found traces of grinding on that cracked tip. Grinding. Yeah. So they tried to fix it, to reuse it. That's what it looks like. They tried to smooth out the damage. And that's huge. Why huge? Because it suggests this wasn't just a disposable tool they'd toss aside if it broke. It was valuable. They invested effort in making it and then effort in maintaining it. That's actually quite touching in a way, resourceful. It is, and it's something we don't often see so clearly with Neanderthal projectile points. It suggests a different relationship with their tools, perhaps. So if it was valuable and used for hunting, mm -hmm. what were they hunting? What else did they find there? Well, the cave had lots of animal remains, a real mix, birds, small mammals, sure, but also bigger stuff. Like bison, deer, early horses, even wild goats. And importantly, a lot of these bones had butchering marks on them. Ah, so they weren't just scavenging leftovers. The evidence points towards active hunting, yes. The presence of these large animals alongside a sophisticated spear point like this, it suggests organized hunting strategies, not just opportunistic foraging. Okay, this is where it gets really interesting, comparing it to what we thought we knew. The old idea was kinda. Neanderthals weren't quite as advanced as Homo sapiens, especially with tools and hunting. 
That was the dominant view for a long time yet, particularly with bone tools. The thinking often went that if Neanderthals used dome tips, they probably learned it from Homo sapiens migrating into their areas. Because we have found early Homo sapiens bone tools, right? We have. Some early examples like knives and spear points come from places like Morocco, maybe 90,000 years ago, and South Africa around 62,000 years ago. So the timing seemed to fit that narrative. We invent it, they maybe pick it up later. Kind of. But this Mismaskaya point throws a wrench in that. It looks quite similar in size and shape to some of those early Homo sapiens points. That's older? Significantly older. At 80,000 to 70,000 years old, it predates those Homo sapiens examples and crucially predates the arrival of Homo sapiens in that specific region of the Caucasus by millennia. So they couldn't have learned it from us there? Not according to this evidence. Golovanova and her team argue pretty strongly that this points to independent invention. Neanderthals figuring out bone-tipped projectiles on their own. Wow. Okay. <laughs> that changes things quite a bit. It really does. Now, it's true. This particular point doesn't show the same kind of uh, intense polishing or grinding you see on some later Homo sapiens bone tools. The manufacturing technique might be distinct. But the core idea, making a spear tip out of bone, hafting it, they got there independently. That's the implication. It challenges that old view of them being cognitively, well, less capable. It adds weight to the idea that Neanderthals developed many aspects of what we used to call modern human behavior all by themselves. Things like using ochre maybe for decoration, using resins for adhesives. This fits into that growing picture. But science isn't about just accepting the first interpretation, is it? Are there other ways to look at this? Any skepticism? Oh, absolutely. Healthy skepticism is key. For instance, an archaeologist named Malvina Bauman raised an interesting point. She questioned whether this specific point, given its likely size and material, would actually be robust enough. Meaning? Meaning, would it be heavy enough, strong enough to be a truly effective, lethal tip for hunting large, tough animals like bison? She suggests it might have been a bit too light, maybe too fragile. That's a fair question. So, if not for big game, then what? Well, that's the question she raises. She calls for more detailed comparisons with other known bone tools from the period, trying to pin down its function more precisely. Maybe it was for smaller prey. Maybe the wooden shaft was the main penetrating component. We don't know for sure yet. So it opens up more questions, really. Exactly. And it makes you wonder, if they were innovating like this, what else were they capable of that we haven't found evidence for yet? How does this one piece you know, force us to rethink their overall intelligence, their adaptability. There's definitely more digging to do, literally and figuratively. Okay, so let's try and sort of nail down the main takeaway for everyone listening. This 80,000-year-old bone spear tip. It's strong evidence, right? Very strong evidence, yeah. That Neanderthals weren't just waiting for us to show them how things were done. They were inventing sophisticated hunting technology on their own much, much earlier than we used to believe. Precisely. It forces a rewrite of those old assumptions about their cognitive limits. So, for you listening, you've basically just journeyed through a discovery that nudges our understanding of human history in a new direction. It shines a light on the ingenuity of a species that, let's be honest, often gets underestimated. Definitely underestimated. And it really gets you thinking, doesn't it? <laughs> if they could figure this out independently, what other innovations, what other aspects of their, you know, their minds, their societies are still hidden from us? What does it tell us about how intelligence and innovation actually arise? Is it just a human thing or something broader? Really profound questions. It shows just how much more there is to learn about our ancient family tree. For sure, the story is far from over. Well, if this deep dive into our deep past got you thinking, if it sparked your curiosity about these kinds of amazing discoveries, then definitely do us a favor. Hit that like button down below. Yeah, and subscribe. We'll be bringing you more explorations like this, unpacking the latest finds that rewrite what we know about our origins. And hey, let us know in the comments what other mysteries from the ancient world. What other breakthroughs would you like us to tackle next time? We'd love to hear your ideas.